Recently, the art of lip syncing has become extremely popular thanks to celebrities like Jimmy Fallon. But they're just Jimmy come latelys. People have been lip syncing for years, even back to the silent film days. For the past six years, local man Michael Goodson has been tapping into his inner Britney Spears and created lip sync videos for his friends as part of a larger annual event called Lip Synco de Mayo. Michael agreed to sit down with us to talk about his process and, if I may, his art. Michael, these are so complicated. Why do you do this? It's a creative outlet that I don't get in my regular nine to five work week. It's a fun project I can come up with once a year, have a great idea, chip away at it a little bit each night, and at the end of the year I've got a nice little companion piece to my work for the year that I can then present, circulate to my circle of friends. Where do you get your inspiration? That really depends on the, on the video. Uh, the third year I participated, I remember flying back sitting in the plane and having this idea for a, a split screen where there would be four of me and I would do all the different parts. And I knew right away I wanted to do a song by The Temptations, so I knew I needed a, a nice gravelly character with a you know, big afro, and then I needed a falsetto character and a guy that sang bass notes, and I just began sketching it out, and it all kind of comes together. Once I get to the camera point where I'm ready to shoot, I have this vague idea of what I'm going to do, but I really don't know until I turn the camera on and start sort of improvising the beats that I've worked out, seeing where there's some space to fill, and eventually, three months into the process or longer, it'll come together and look like something. How do you pick a song? I know that I'm going to listen to the song about two or three hundred times, so it has to, to start with, be a song that I love. So I pull upon inspirations. I love the Temptations. I knew I wanted to do a Temptation song. I loved the Smothers Brothers growing up. So when it came time, I knew I wanted to pay tribute to the Smothers Brothers. So it's really just a song that I know that I can hear repetitively over and over and over again. And it's not going to make me sick and disgusted of it. Was that Temptations video the most complicated one you've done? Certainly at the time. That was my third video. The first one I did, I had no camera skills whatsoever. So I literally turned the camera on, did my little shtick, turned the camera off. The second year, I knew I needed to learn how to use my video editing software, so I didn't want to just have one long continuous shot. So my second video is, is nothing but a series of chopped up shots shot all over the Bay Area. When I came time for the third video, Psychedelic Shack, it was definitely the largest project I tackled to date because I had to film it in pieces. If I film the top left square where I have a full beard, I had to plan out that the next character I had to shoot was missing this part of my facial hair. And then the third character I was gonna shoot just had a mustache. And then the last character I shot had a clean shaven. So it had to be planned out months in advance. First I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do this. And then requiring or coordinating bits where two characters interact with each other. There's a good three weeks between the point where I do this to the left and I film the other part to the guy receiving it on the right. And I just have to keep all that in kind of my head until it comes time to film. Have any of them just fallen apart on you? That's an interesting question. No, so far they've all lived up to what I had in my head. Now some of them have very large scale, like my Smothers Brothers trilogy, where I worked with a partner, we filmed three short videos that all look different and are shot different, but then I also did a video uh, based on Little Red Riding Hood by Sam Sham and the Pharaohs, which I had an injury that year, and so my ambitions were scaled back. It was something I could shoot very easily, it had my kids in it, I could kind of lean on them for charm and cuteness, and uh, so that one, if, if you're comparing them side by size, Side by side, the ambition levels vary. So nothing's really fallen apart. It's just things had to be scaled based upon what was uh, ideal at the time. So what's next for you and Lipsinko? That's another great question, Derek. Um, the hosts of the party have decided they've had enough. It's been eight years of inviting a lot of people into their home to uh, participate in the fun. So the actual physical event of going to New Jersey every year is over. But... I still have some things inside me creatively that I want to get out. And so what's probably next is I will take my name off of everything and release them into the wild on YouTube and just see where they go and continue making maybe one video a year. Who knows? 